Okay, the regular school board meeting of District 518 on December 20th, 2022 will come to order. Uh, let the minutes reflect that all board members are present except for Mike Harberts. Um, thank you for everyone that's here in attendance uh, tonight in the band room and also to those that are viewing via live stream. Under cor correspondence and recognition, um, there's been no request for public participation and um, no recognition of students, staff, and community, but I also that, that our students and staff have been doing amazing things in the district. Um, just don't have anything right now to report, so follow us on social media and you can see all those wonderful things that our students and staff are doing. Next is 2.0, approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve both the consent and main agenda? So moved, Steve. Okay, got a motion by Steve. Do I have a second? Second. And a second by Joel. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. The next item is 3.0, approval of the minutes. 3.1, approval of the November 15th, 2022 school board meeting minutes and also 3.2, accept the committee meeting minutes as included in your packet. Do I have a motion for approval of 3.0? I move approval of the minutes. Okay, we have a um, motion by Adam. Second. Second by Tom. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Next, 4.0, the consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the items under the consent agenda? So moved, Steve. Motion by Steve. Second. Second by Brad. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Next, under the main agenda, the monthly financial overview. Dave? Should have the revenues and expenditures report uh, through the end of November. Um, currently, our revenue is running just slightly behind of where we were at this time last year, and our expenditures are running slightly ahead, but those will tend to even out um, a lot of it's based on timing of payments and and whatnot but um, you can see at the bottom there our construction expense um, we are starting to wind that down the intermediate school is pretty close to spent out um, we just have a couple little things to finish up there before we can close that out community ed is winding up uh, as well and so those expenses will start to dwindle off as well but uh, there's been nothing unusual or either good or bad so okay thanks david any questions for dave okay moving on then 5.2 approve the second reading of policy 722 the public data and data subject requests and this is the second reading. Do I have a motion for approval? A motion um, by Tom. Second. Second by Brad. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. <clears throat> motion passes. Next item, 5.3, approve the second reading of policy 908, the naming rights. Again, this is the second reading. Do I have a motion? I so move. Okay, we have a motion by Joel. Yep. Second by Adam. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Next, 5.4, approve the second reading of policy 729, credit card policy. I'll entertain a motion. I am so moved, Steve. Okay, motion by Steve. Second. Second by Tom. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Next item is 5.5, approve the resolution directing the reallocation of general education revenue. John, you wanna give an update there? Yeah, so this is a annual resolution that the board will entertain approving. It's just reallocating some of the funding to cover costs, whether it's district administrative costs or other costs within the district that um, are based on the per pupil funding. It's reallocating that to fit the budget. 
Okay, do I have a motion to approve this resolution? So moved. Okay, we have a motion by Brad. Second. Second by Adam. Okay, any questions or discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Ms. Studley. Aye. Mr. Lorenz. Aye. Mr. Prince. Aye. Mr. Bloom. Aye. Mr. Schneider. Aye. Mr. Schaefer. Aye. Motion passes. The next item is 5.6, approve the resolution directing the administration to make recommendations for possible reductions. Again, this is annual um, resolution that's, that's done uh, to address poten any potential reductions that we would need to make in this year. Doesn't look like there's any, but at this point, um, it's that annual resolution we do. It's the first step in the process. Okay, I'll entertain a motion for approval of this resolution. I so move. Okay, we have a motion by Joel. Second by Steve. Second by Steve. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, uh, roll call vote. Ms. Dudley. Aye. Mr. Lorenz. Aye. Mr. Prince. Aye. Mr. Bloom. Aye. Mr. Schneider. Aye. Mr. Schaefer. Aye. Motion passes. The next item is 5.7, approve the 2023 legislative priorities. John, you want to go over that? So these were presented to the committees, and again, um, as district priorities, we've addressed the education funding, um, which uh, centers on EL, learner funding, 5% um, basic formula increase, eliminating the special ed cross subsidy, subsidy gap, uh, building equalization, addressing the teacher licensure and shortage issues, um, increase early childhood funding, providing authority to you as a local school board to address, um, example, operating referendum, and then reductions in mandates and legislative requirements, and the last one is pupil teacher evaluation um, review. Okay, um, do I have a motion to approve the 2023 legislative priorities? So moved. Okay, a motion by Adam. Second. Second by Joel. Any discussion on those priorities? Lori? Yes. I noticed on the, uh, when it was sent out to us for the active board members, mm -hmm. Mr. Harberts is actually an active board member and not the oncoming board member. So how can we approve something that's not current? It actually got changed. Thanks, John. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good thinking there. Okay, any other questions? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. The next item is to approve the district action plan. John, what's changed? Yeah, so it's pretty much been updated. Again, it's a living document, but we approve it generally one time a year. Um, this is kind of when we look to try and approve it. Um, it happens sometimes at other local uh, times, but it's kind of the roadmap we follow as we start to move forward. And again, it'll get adjusted. It's a living document, but it gives us that roadmap of where we're headed with some of the things, so. Okay, do I have a motion to approve the district action plan? Moved. Okay, we have a motion by Brad. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, second by Joel. Any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Next item is to approve the student expulsion number one. I so move the approval of expulsion number one. Any motion by Steve? Do I have a second? Second. Second by Adam. Any discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Ms. Studley. Aye. Mr. Lorenz. Aye. Mr. Prince. Aye. Mr. Bloom. Aye. Mr. Schneider. Aye. Mr. Schaefer. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Next item 5.10, consideration approval of the 2022 levy payable in 2023. Do you have a motion for approval? So moved. Okay, I'll go with a motion by Brad and a second by Steve. Okay, any discussion on the levy that we just went through? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Next item is 5.11, approve the first reading of policy 534, school meals policy. 
Jalen, you wanted to give it. Yeah, update. the school meal policy is really just updating what the federal requirements are. Um, there was a slight change related to not denying students meals and, and in relation to the zero balance. So it's been updated to reflect what's required in law and uh, it follows MSBA model policy. Okay, do I have a motion to approve the first reading of the policy? So moved. Okay, a motion by Adam, second. Second by uh, Tom. Any discussion or questions? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Next item is 5.12, approve the resolution approving the tax abatement. Do I have a motion for approval? We just went through I that. I so move. Okay, I have a motion by Joel. Second, Steve. A second by Steve. Okay, any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Roll call. Aye. Oh, aye. Sorry, oh, sorry, roll, roll call, call vote. Roll call vote. Ms. Dudley. Aye. Mr. Lorenz. Aye. Mr. Prins. Aye. Mr. Bloom. Aye. Mr. Schneider. Aye. Mr. Schaefer. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Next item is 5.13, approve the student expulsion number two. So moved. Okay, a motion by Adam. Second. Steve, second. Second by Steve. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Ms. Dudley. Aye. Mr. Lorenz. Aye. Mr. Prins. Aye. Mr. Bloom. Aye. Mr. Schneider. Aye. Mr. Schaefer. Aye. Motion passes. Next item is 5.14, approve student expulsion number three. So we'll move, Steve. Motion by Steve. Do I have a second? Second. I'll go second with Brad. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Ms. Dudley. Aye. Mr. Lorenz. Aye. Mr. Prins. Aye. Mr. Bloom. Aye. Mr. Schneider. Aye. Mr. Schaefer. Aye. Motion passes. Next item 5.15 approve a resignation agreement. <coughs> Do you have anything with that? Yeah, so um, I have a resignation agreement with uh, teacher Bridget Smith. Um, it would be for immediate resignation and the agreement just outlines the requirements of that resignation. And I'd recommend approval. I would move to approve. Okay, motion by Brad, second? Second. Second by Adam. Any discussion? One question. Do we have any any ongoing costs involved with this to the district or, or no. none at all? No. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Next item is 5.16, approve student expulsion number four. I move for approval of expulsion number four, Steve. Okay, motion by Steve. Second. Second by Adam. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Ms. Dudley. Aye. Mr. Lorenz. Aye. Mr. Prins. Aye. Mr. Bloom. Aye. Mr. Schneider. Aye. Mr. Schaefer. Aye. Motion passes. Next item, 5.17, approve student expulsion number five. So moved. Motion by Adam. Second. Second by Joel. Any discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Ms. Dudley. Aye. Mr. Lorenz. Aye. Mr. Prins. Aye. Mr. Bloom. Aye. Mr. Schneider. Aye. Mr. Schaefer. Aye. Motion passes. The next item is 5.18, approve student expulsion number six. Move to approve. Okay, we have a motion by Brad. Second by Tom. Second by Tom. Any discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Ms. Dudley. Aye. Mr. Lorenz. Aye. Mr. Prins. Aye. Mr. Bloom. Aye. Mr. Schneider. Aye. Mr. Schaefer. Aye. Motion passes. Okay, moving on then to 5.19, approved to pay out 15 days of vacation. Do motion for approval? Uh, I would move to approve. Okay, motion by Brad. Second. Second. I'll go with Tom, second by Tom. Okay, any discussion? Is there, is there any anything you wanna elaborate on at all? Um, no, it's related to the inability to um, utilize all the vacation based on uh, loss of regging, loss of employees in their department as well as building construction projects that have been going on. So, um, 
I, I think it's really important to note that this is a special circumstance and this is not a precedent we're setting for other employees. Um, yeah. So. Thanks. Any other discussion or comments? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Next item is 5.20, approved to declare iPads as surplus property. This was 1,100 iPads. So moved, Steve. Okay, motion by Steve. Second. Second. Second by Joel. Any discussion? What happens to them when they get just, they donated or? Um, they're actually resold to a company that refurbishes old iPads. Um, we get a check for, for them. Okay. 1,100 iPads potentially is 45 to 50,000, I think. Depends on the... Depends on the time. It, yeah. okay. Any other questions? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. <coughs> Motion passes. Next item is 5.21, approve the security access software. And this is for $12,000. John, you want to elaborate on that? Um, yes, this was brought forward in relation to um, building our cybersecurity efforts, and it would create a, a two-step authentic, authentic uh, approach to um, employee use. It's trying to cut off. Um, those phishing emails and some of the other stuff. And if we're ever gonna be able to get cyber insurance, this is one of those requirements that's also in place. One incident can be well over this $12,000 cost. So, and it is an annual cost. Okay, do we have a motion for approval? Hey, so move. Okay, we have a motion by Joel. Second. Second by Adam. Any discussion? So is that, is that, pre, is that cost, is, is that going to be a locked-in cost, or is that just... It could, it could increase like everything. There's no, like, a three-year agreement or nothing you can't do on that? Or? There's not, a, at this point, a long-term agreement or multi-year agreement. This is year one. So that next year cost could be, is that kind of like an upgrade, or...? Um, you know, the next year cost I can't really speak to. Um, at all. So you upgrade the software, I would imagine, wouldn't it? Um, if there's upgrades, it could be an increased cost. I don't believe that will happen with this right now, but I never, you never know about technology upgrades. So basically it'd be a two-step process to get into your computer. Correct. So an example would be, I, I go to my computer, turn it on, I can go to enter my password, but what will happen is it'll force a code to go to my phone, of which then I have to use that code to get in. Okay. okay any other questions or discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Next item is 5.22, approve the authority to buy two additional special education vehicles. Dave, you want to update this? Right, we are uh, <laughs> experiencing a growth in our uh, special education students that require transportation and we don't have enough vehicles. Um, we put out a request uh, to the dealers in town for a couple Suburbans, used ones, uh, to see what we could find. We did this probably a year ago or so and we're just adding students and adding students. Um, what I got back, I got from uh, Billion, and um, I would recommend, a, we've got a 2019 Suburban uh, with just over 62,000 miles for $41,977, and a 2020 Suburban with just under 63,000 miles for $45,495. So it would be a total of... $87,472, and this would hopefully uh, catch us up. We also have a couple vehicles that will actually time out 
in a year or so. So unless the number of kids goes down, we'll probably be back again then. Have we ever looked at leasing? Vehicles? Yeah. Uh, we haven't, no. No. Okay, I'll entertain a motion then to authorize Dave to buy two special education vehicles for the school district. So no move, Steve. Motion by Steve. Second. Second. Second by Joel. Any other questions or discussion surrounding? So Billion was the only ones that responded, or did you reach out to other people? I reached out to everybody. Of course, they're all Billion except for Schultes, and they weren't able to find any uh, used ones that fit our parameters. So, And as we go, the mileage keeps going up a little bit that are available. Um, they're, they're getting harder to find. So does this come out of general funds then, or does it come out of the... We have... Uh, a trust fund uh, it was a donation I don't know six seven years ago that we're able to use for special ed purchases and that's where where this would there's enough in there to cover it yes okay any other discussion so how many miles do we put on a year on each vehicle then it was 62,000 are we going to have a hundred thousand on it the first year or oh, no. it, it depends some of our vehicles travel to Wyndham every day some to Pipestone, depending on the students. Most of them are local. A lot of them never leave town. Some of them go out in the country um, a little ways. But I, I guess I don't know the exact, it varies per vehicle. So we able get, we got drivers for these? I mean, so far, so far. Our, our special ed pairs generally drive and ride along uh, for these, so. It takes a lot of them. So far, we've been fortunate. What do we consider a timed out vehicle then? What, like, where do you draw the line, I guess? As far as what? When you time a vehicle out. Uh, state requires, it used to be 10. 10 years. They've extended that due to the lack of vehicles availability. So I think we can get out to 12 years now from date of manufacture. Okay. It's not by miles, it's by years. It's by years. Sometimes they time out by miles before they get there, but uh, mm -hmm. we've, we've not had that problem before. So, Okay, any other discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Next item is to approve the middle school parking lot bid. Um, Dave, we'll go right back to you. Uh, we held bid opening last week, Wednesday, I believe it was, for the uh, the first phase of the middle school parking lot reconstruction. We we received five bids, which was very nice. Um, the low bid was submitted by Henning Construction of Adrian. Uh, the base bid was three hundred and sixty-six thousand four hundred and sixty-four dollars. And then the alternate was, uh, we had two alternates for different kinds of base material. Uh, the recommendation is to go with alternate B, which is, is all sand base. Um, and that was $61,630 for a total of, well, I had it there. $428,094. And that was uh, the estimate for alternate B was 603,000, so it's about a 28% below the engineer's estimate. Um, so they were very pleased with the way the bids came in. Okay. So, Does this also include the drainage that we talked about? Yes, there is drainage in this to uh, on the west edge of the building that will help pull that water away and uh, run it out into the swamp, slough, wet spot, whatever. I'll entertain a motion so we can go ahead and have more, more discussion. Question. Yes. Um, you said there was a concrete lot? This will be concrete, okay. Okay. going back in. I move approval with alternate B. Okay, um, we have a motion by Steve. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, second by Joel. <clears throat> okay, more discussion then? 
one thing I, I do want to bring up, potentially we could do a change order to increase the amount we do. That might be a conversation um, to do a little more since we're well under the what the uh, estimate was, but that might have to come up here uh, in a little bit if we can figure out if we can expand it and what the cost is. So. I'm sure. Yes, Steve. With the uh, with the low price, I would say if we could, that'd be a good, that'd be a great option to do to get to lock in and use that low price to do more of the work. Next time we go out another year or two from now and do more of that lot, we might find the prices are significantly higher. And, and if we get more done now, I think we'd be better off to do it that way with the money available and and lock in that lower price if we can, and pay a higher price a year or two from now. Is this phase one half of the lot, or is there? There's three phases. Three that phases. Are, okay. That this calls for. Okay. So we'd have to find another demarcation line, so to speak, as to where we could stop add inside. and stop uh, without causing us any issues. Uh, we have a couple options, but. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Next line is 5.24. Discuss, approve the 2023-2024 school calendar. On. So um, I have the calendar in front of me. There's a few things that aren't, um, and, he, and he were sent, I believe, the calendar. But I just there's a few th changes from what I would call uh, what you would look at as a normal calendar. The beginning of the year starts relatively the same with the three days of new teacher in service and workshops, and then the four days of everybody's workshops um, with the regular break for Labor Day. Uh, at the end of September, it would be a staff in, in service day on September 29th. One of the changes is October uh, 20th. We don't have the 19th and 20th. We just have the 20th on there. That's typically what's been considered Education Minnesota days uh, as also a comp for um, parent-teacher conferences. Um, so that 20th would be one of those days. April 1st would be the other day. Uh, in November, then, we would have an in-service at the end of the first quarter or staff workshop day. Um, Thanksgiving is typical. Christmas break would be pretty much a typical. And then in January, there's the end of the second quarter semester <clears throat> with a staff workshop day again. February, um, if you see, we before President's Day, we take off the Friday and then President's Day. And here's where the big change comes in March at Easter time or spring break time. It's the end of the third quarter on March 22nd and then taking a little over a full week off for spring break. And then April and May would be a push to the end with not a lot of breaks, but uh, moving through the entire year. So one of the changes is it's one less student instruction day. It would be 176 instead of 177. And there then would be 10 um, staff workshop days or uh, those staff development days that occur. Um, makeup days would strictly be the 5e learning days and then June 3 through 7. Totally different um, looking calendar than, uh, I shouldn't say totally, but very different. Um, a few things that aren't defined yet are when the open houses are and the uh, elementary conferences are not on the calendar yet, that we need to do that. That will also determine what day um, the elementary schools start, which is Prairie and the Intermediate School. So we have to still get those on, but there's so many people asking about the calendar, we wanna get the calendar approved and then we'll add those in. Okay, so staff contract days stay the same, just the student instructional day is one less. Correct. Okay. And again, 
the minister, all the administrators have looked at this. I did ask for input from uh, the teachers association. Um, and I think for the most part, I didn't get a lot of negative feedback about the calendar as it sits. When you presented this to instructional last week, March 22nd was an off day, and, and October 20th was not. Is, is that is that? Yeah, we did the switch. There? Yeah, okay. I was a little compromising there. Okay, well, and well, trying to get a day off in there. Well, was there anything else that, that, that changed? From, no, from that, that would be it. Okay. Sorry, I forgot to bring that up. Thank you. Okay, do I have a motion for approval of the 23-24 calendar? So moved. Okay, we have a motion by Tom. Second? Second by Steve. Second by Steve. So any other questions or discussion on the calendar? And the true spring break of five days, that's over Easter. It's Easter, Mon Easter Monday and then forward. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, Easter, no. Easter, Easter, it's before Easter. Okay, so, okay, it's before Easter. Yeah, Easter is on... 31st? Or 31st. Okay, so it's right before that. Yeah. Okay, all right, got it. April 1 is, e is Easter, Easter Monday. Just, just a, is this intended to be a continuation in future years? To, to, uh, have a, to try and have a longer break at Easter and, and, and uh, not as many days off for the Education Minnesota conference? Yes, that's, okay. that's the direction. What everybody wants to see from what I've got, gotten feedback. So. Okay. Well, it also appears commencements a week later as well commencements after Memorial Day instead of Friday before Memorial Day so um, that, that, that's a change as well but it still keeps us in May which is which right. is which is good any other questions or discussion okay hearing none all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. those opposed same sign motion passes Next item is 5.25, approve new course offerings at the high school and learning center. Don, you got those or? So I don't have my sheet, but I see Mr. Noble's back there. I, I had a seat for him up by Lisa. But anyway, um, I, I can't remember all the courses. I Drone. Yeah, I got them. Drone. And there's an English reading, right? There was a reading, uh, adult reading or uh, adult literature, public yeah, I speaking. Find my sheet. I, I'm looking for it too. Uh, the, there's, a, there's a child, a child education at the learning center. Okay, here they are: breaking the ice and introduction to public speaking, young adult literature class, a farm to table, ag elective class for 10th through 12th graders. The drones class for industrial arts elective for 11th and 12th graders, a multilingual choir art elective, 9 through 12th. And then at the learning center, there's a children's literature English elective concurrent credit course for 11th and 12th graders. So this was presented at the instructional committee. So do I have a motion for approval of those classes? I move approval. Okay, we have a motion by Adam. Do we have a second? Second, Steve. Second by Steve. Okay, any discussion on those classes? Well, my understanding is most of them are not replacing anything except for the, the, the drone class. Is that replacing robotics or is that in connection with robotics? There's um, something about if that. I understood it was replacing robotics. No, the, the, I'm getting a lot of head shaking over there. What? Reducing sections of robotics. Okay. Okay. So there'll still be robotics, just not as many sections of it. Okay. All right. Um, any other discussion or questions? Question. Yes. Um, computer science. Uh, state of Minnesota is, is the lowest in the country for having curriculum for computer science. Uh, computer technology type classes for a state that started out as one of the leaders in computers uh, and that kind of technology Minnesota seems to have slipped significantly and I know on the MSBA platform uh, you know that was one of the issues was was promoting uh, Minnesota uh, curriculum and stuff to 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 include 
that kind of, uh, of education. So I know we're not doing anything additional, but I just wanted to point out that that is something that's been identified where Minnesota lags significantly behind the rest of the country being the last or the bottom of the states uh, providing these kinds of curriculums and stuff. So I think we should be aware we're adding things in. Maybe that's something we should keep in mind that might be a, a good program to add in or, or augment with what we're already doing. I think sometimes these things don't show up. We do things like this, but we don't necessarily show up in the curriculum as strongly as, as what it would across the country. So I just want to point that out. Uh, that was an MSBA uh, uh, resolution that was presented uh, to lobby for, for that in Minnesota, and, and obviously with it, hopefully funding. Um, but I just want us to be aware that if we're adding classes and stuff, we should maybe keep that in mind. Okay, thanks, Steve. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or discussion on the class course titles or what we're adding to the high school and learning center? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Okay, that completes the agenda, John. Superintendent's report. <clears throat> so first thing I wanted to bring up is uh, the community ed building will be, um, it was actually on Thursday, they were supposed to do occupancy, final occupancy, but it'll probably be a week later. Um, that item then, um, if you would like to do a tour, Dave is kind of working out, we have to work around the waxing schedule but he's thinking the first or second week in January if the board would be interested in doing that. And if you are interested, we kind of need to have a time that might work the best. I think most of us are interested, at least I am. Yes, I'm interested in it. My okay. schedule is kind of full, though. you have to work around that. I can see it. <laughs> Taking some is there a preferred time to try and shoot for? Um, we got the MSBA conference in there, so it'd have to be either before or after that. First week of January would be good if we could work it in then. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what the what the floor schedule looks like right yeah. now. So, well, maybe the best thing to do is just find some days when you think we could be open and send out an email. And what time of day works best for you? How about I'm, after the organizational I'm meeting? I'm only available in the evenings. So. Um, evenings, okay. That's the first week of or, the yeah evenings. Okay. Uh, we got an evening here. Um, I'm flexible. That evening, what are you talking about like seven o'clock, Brad? Or are you no, until maybe five five thirty six? What? Five thirty six? Yeah, that's that's. Or five thirty seven or five thirty eight. You know, okay. Either way. So one of those times around there. Yeah, one of those. That'd times. be fine. Okay, work something out. So about around five thirty on one of those evenings. Yeah. Once we know better what the schedule looks like, we can find a date and set it up. Okay. Um, I did want to mention that the soil, uh, the board, watershed um, board did receive their grant of $970,312. So we will begin working on an easement lease for that project. Um, and then once that easement is the, well, the actual engineer will start working on that and trying to put a map together so we have the space and everything defined in that. But they did receive the grant, so I want to make sure you're aware of that. Um, also then, the Nobles County Board of Commissioners approved the, uh, the grant request for 400,000, and there was a deed grant. This is all related to daycare. So they now are at about 550,000 to, again, continue addressing daycare and creating slots, supporting current providers, and trying to increase new providers. So that was, I believe, covered today at the Nobles County Board Commissioner's meeting. Um, enrollment, just kind of want to make sure you're aware of the enrollment. Right now, Prairie Elementary is at 717, Intermediate at 662, Middle School at 670, High school, 1,138. Learning center, 115. So the total enrollment is 3,302 students currently, which is down right around 30 to 40 students from what projections were. Um, 
Likewise, I do want to mention, because you don't ever hear these numbers, but I'll mention it, targeted services. There's 321 students participating. That's K-8, which is a little less than normal. And then night school is 157 students. That's 10-12, which is a higher number than normal. The last item I want to mention is the weather for the remainder of the week. Um, which is not proposed to be very good. Um, we believe tomorrow we'll be able to go to school and it depends on how much snow comes and how fast it comes, um, whether we'll get the whole day in or not. But at this point, we intend to go the whole day. With that then, the um, weather forecast for Thursday is not very good. High winds, cold temperatures, um, and then likewise that carries into Friday. So what I want to make you aware of, my plan would be to cancel school on Thursday and Friday. And Thursday would become uh, PD day for staff, teachers and parents. <clears throat> and then we would allow um, work from home for those folks that need to do that. Um, the PD day would help meet the teacher contract, but would decrease our instructional time by a day, and uh, Friday would potentially be a makeup day or put somewhere else. And that was only half a day anyway, right? It's a half a day, yes. So we, we could put a half a day somewhere and, and be okay. Well, it's a full work day, but a half day student day. Yes, Steve. The, uh, we, we have a limit on how many e-learning days we can have. Uh, I think it's five in a year. I mean, a school year, not a calendar year. Um, where are we at with our e-learning days and, and how many? We have three. We left. use three. We use three. Okay, so we only have two left on that. Yeah, All right. yeah. so th that is what I will be putting out tomorrow um, for communication unless... You as a board tell me different. So, yeah. Other years, the governor has declared it no school because of cold temperatures. That won't happen. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, that's a whole um, There have been governors in the past that have done that. Mm -hmm. um, but typically, they get a huge amount of backlash for what people determine should be a local decision. So is there any way of extending the e-learning days? Is that just? Um, we could, but at this point, I would just soon save the two e-learning days. We're just getting started into the winter. Yeah, it's early. Are, aren't the e-learning day limits set by statute? Or is that a, is that a policy? Correct. That's a statute, isn't it? Yeah. Is there a policy? Yeah. And they can... As a legislature add on, they have done that in the past, but there's no guarantees that will happen. I mean, it's, it's not like we set five days on our calendar. That's just what they said you could up to five days. Yes, so we have to up the state level. It's out of our control. Correct. So that would be my plan for the remainder of the week, unless, like I said, you as a board make a different decision. Good decision with the cold temperatures and the winds, even without all the snow for visibility. I, I you know, I think for that one day, I, I, I think it'd be a, it's going to put a, a, a lot, to, it's going to put a lot of work on a lot of people to get PD put together, but uh, we just feel it's going to be a beneficial approach. Their example at Prairie, they're working on some big things and they can use that time very efficiently, as an example. So it'll be optional for staff to come in or work from home on that Thursday, is what we're saying. Okay. Okay, any other questions for John on his report? Okay, moving on then to the instructional committee report. Adam? Uh, everything's been covered pretty well, I'd say. Okay, operations committee report. Mike's not here. Um, you weren't here. You were. I was, and I, I think we covered everything <laughs> I that I had. I think everything is fine. Yeah, I think so, too. I think we got everything covered there. Okay, any other reports? 
Okay, uh, next under other business, I wanted to thank Mike Harperts for his service on the school board. He's not here tonight, but thank you for all his time and efforts and commitment to the District 518, and we thank him wholeheartedly for stepping up and being a member of our board. So thank you to Mike Harperts, and um, we'll reorganize then in, well, I guess that's next, uh, eight future business is the special school board reorganizational meeting is scheduled for January 3rd. Uh, 2023 at 7.30 a.m. in the West Building Conference Room. And then we'll welcome Aaron Wazinski to that meeting and we'll reorganize then as a, a board. So any questions on that date that work for everybody? Okay, if there's no other future business, um, the meeting's adjourned. <laughs>